Total question, Baroness Butt of Solihull. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the question refers to the transfer of a life or other indeterminate sentence prisoner to an open prison. That is an operational decision for the Secretary of State. He's not obliged to follow the Parole Board's advice, but will take it into account. From January to March 2023, the Secretary of State considered 90 recommendations by the Parole Board for a prisoner moved to open prison. The Secretary of State accepted 14 recommendations and rejected 76. My Lords, uh, it's an old saying in Parliament that uh, never ask a question of a minister unless you know the answer already. Um, <laughs> and I read with interest the Noble Lord the Minister's uh, response to Lord Blunkett uh, on the 27th of April. The figures that the uh, noble Lord has quoted is less than one in six referrals from parole boards. And I just can't get my head around uh, uh, about how small that figure is. Uh, and in response, uh, the, you know, the, the Minister outlines the criteria uh, to be taken into consideration. Um, but the parole board making the recommendations, surely they will know what criteria uh, the government is going on. What's the point in then keep on making referrals yeah. if, the, if the Secretary of State yeah. is not going to listen? Yeah. 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 Well, Lords, I think I should clarify that this particular advisory function of the Parole Board has no statutory basis. It dates historically to the time when the Parole Board was part of the Home Office. The Parole Board has no operational responsibility for the safety or security of the open estate, nor for the rehabilitation of prisoners, nor for the categorization of which prisoners are suitable for which prisons. In June 2002, the Secretary of State adopted new criteria for the transfer of prisoners to open prisons, and unfortunately, in the Secretary of State's view, uh, those criteria have not been fully followed by the Parole Board advices. Those decisions by the Secretary of State can, of course, be challenged in the court. Of last year, 88 references were made from the Parole Board and 80 were accepted. The change over the last year can have nothing to do with whether the Parole Board are following the Minister of Justice criteria, which says this, the prisoner is uh, assessed as of low risk uh, of absconding and the period of open conditions is considered essential to inform future uh, decisions about release. Now, the Parole Board are for following that criteria laid down by the MOJ, but the MOJ are following a different route. And the question is, why? <laughs> well, Lords, with great respect to the, to the noble Lord, Lord Blunkett, who has enormous uh, experience and expertise in this area, the Secretary of State's view is that the Parole Board is not entirely following the uh, the change in criteria that was adopted in June 2022, uh, particularly in regard to the essential nature of the move to open conditions to inform future decisions about release. And there is indeed a further condition that the transfer to open conditions would not undermine public confidence in the criminal justice system. That's a matter for the Secretary of State. The Lords, uh, the Lords in March, the High Court held that the previous Secretary of State, Dominic Raab, had acted unlawfully by instructing probation officers not to give the parole board their own view of the risks of release of particular prisoners if that conflicted with the views of Mr Raab. Can the Minister assure me, please, that the new Secretary of State for Justice, uh, Alex Chalk, who I warmly welcome to his post, has a better understanding of the importance of the independence of the parole board and of its processes? The Secretary of State will, of course, abide by the recent decision of the High Court and will entirely respect the constitutional position of the Parole Board. I should, I think, my Lords, add that what we're talking about today in relation to 76 decisions is 32 prisoners serving a mandatory life sentence for murder, 11 serving a discretionary life sentence for rape and other various sexual offences, 
eight on an IPP sentence for serious sexual offences and another 25 for serious offences, all involving violence against the person. Long ago, my concern that too many people are going to prison. And has a recent assessment been made of the effects of community restorative justice, which I saw in Northern Ireland when I was chairman of the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee in the other place, was extremely effective. The Noble Lord, if I may say so, makes a very fair point. Uh, that is a matter primarily for the Sentencing Council, but the Government, of course, will keep it under review. My Lord, we long ago got rid of uh, Home Office Ministers setting tariffs in life sentences because it uh, permitted politics to become involved in the justice system. Can my noble friend assure me that of the 76 decisions made by the Secretary of State rejecting a parole board recommendation, that politics played no part whatsoever in any of those decisions. <laughs> My Lords, those decisions are, were all taken on the merits. May I repeat that this is an operational matter of which prison the prisoner should be in. That is quite distinct from the question of whether a prisoner should be released, which is the primary role of the parole board. My Lords, the principal reason that people are worried about this is because they believe that release straight from closed conditions and higher security conditions actually increases the risk of re-offending and that a period in open conditions is very helpful in reducing that risk. So will the Noble Lord the Minister return to this House at a future date and inform us of what has happened um, as a consequence of the decisions that were taken by the Secretary of State and whether actually preventing a period in open conditions. It doesn't prevent release. All it does is prevent preparation for release. My Lords, I'm entirely happy to give the House whatever information it requires at any, at any time. And I fully accept that a move to an open prison is, is potentially one aspect of a prisoner's progression towards release. But in modern thinking, that is not the only route. A number of closed prisons operate prisoner progression programs towards release direct from closed prisons, and those relatively new programs are enjoying uh, results, and several hundred prisoners are released every year from those closed conditions without, as I know, any evidence that that poses a risk to the community. Lord Cormac's question. Um, uh, does the Minister accept that short-term prison sentences tend to lead to very high reoffending rates and often prisoners come out uh, more criminal than they went in? If we can ensure that community sentences really do address the underlying causes of criminality and the Justice and Home Affairs Select Committee are looking at that, will the Minister accept that short-term prison sentences really should be abandoned in favour of community sentences? Yeah. Well, Lords, I cannot, as of today, accept that proposition. I can entirely see the arguments. It's a very big question, and I'm sure we'll discuss it on a future occasion. It's presumably, the Secretary of State has access to all the information which the Parole Board has, and the Parole Board are well aware of all the relevant matters. So what, why the difference? Does, should the Secretary of State give reasons for rejecting the, the recommendations? State gives reasons in every individual case, and those cases can be challenged. My Lord, has my noble friend given consideration to what might be called the, the, the ripple effect of the change in criteria on parole board decisions about um, uh, this decision, in, in, where, the, where the sentences are less than life sentences, where they're making other judgments about moving people from uh, closed to open prisons? Now, I ask that because anecdotally one hears and my noble friend may be able to comment on this, that there are now spare beds opening up, spare spaces in open prisons that can't be filled while the closed prison estate comes under ever more pressure. Well, the Secretary of State, when introducing these new rules in January 2022, prioritised the precautionary principle and the protection of the public, despite enormous pressure on the closed estate, he took the view, in my view, if I may say so rightly, that public protection was more important than the short-term expedient of 
transferring prisoners who are not suitable for open conditions to open conditions simply to reduce pressures on the closed estate. It's that the government's policy has been driven by dogma again, that they're not looking at the evidence, that re-offending st- rates are still too, far too high, jails are full, and yet ministers are claiming they're going to have longer and tougher sentences. Don't the government need to revisit this again and come up with a, a coherent plan for dealing with this matter? Yeah. The Lords, as I've said on previous occasions, reoffending rates are slowly coming down, and I take this opportunity to pay tribute to the previous Secretary of State for his work, particularly on prisons, in terms of education, improved education, improved employment opportunities, accommodation on release, and other reforms, which I'm sure will bear good fruit in due time. Fourth oral question, Lord Barclay. My Lords, I beg leave.